Number six is about a rumor spreading at a party, and it says, it takes 3.5 seconds for each person to spread the rumor for the first eight people. After that, it takes 4.5 seconds per person to spread it. So we can see there's two parts to this piecewise function. First, for n is going to be the number of people, so from zero people up to eight, and then for more than eight people. Now it's 3.5 seconds per person. That's slope, so it's just 3.5 times n. Now for the second piece, bef before we can figure this out, we need to know where, at what point does the first piece end. So I'm just going to take this last n value, plug it in for n, so 3.5 times 8, and that's going to come out 28. So I know that after 8 people, it's been 28 seconds. So then I'm, what I'm going to do is that my new slope is 4.5 seconds, so that's my new m, and the easiest way to do this is just use your transformational foot form of a linear equation. So it's 4.5 and then it's to the right 8 so x minus 8 and then up 28 so plus 28. So you can either write it like that or you can write it like it's written over here. So the rest of 6 is actually up here for me for some reason but basically I'm just plugging in 10 into that formula and to figure out uh, how long it takes the rumor to spread for 10 people. Number seven, just check, make sure you check your domain values. Where does the x value fit into the domain over here bef before you decide uh, which piece to plug it into? So since zero is less than one, I plug zero into the first piece and get negative two. Since one is greater than or equal to one, I plug into the second piece and get four. Next, we're gonna do our transformations. Remember that all the transformations that affect the y happen outside f of x, and all the transformations that, fa that affect x happen on the inside. And we'll also remember that the transformations on the outside are really exactly how you expect them to happen, but on the inside you're going to have to do things like take the reciprocal for stretches and compressions and switch the sign for moving left and right. So let's start with this one. We have a negative on the outside. That's going to cause a reflection over the x-axis and minus 8 is going to move it down 8 units. Um, we got to take the reciprocal on the inside here. We're multiplying the reciprocal of 3 is 1 third, so we're actually going to say it's a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 third. Okay, remember we're just going to take the reciprocal there. And if I was writing the mapping, you can see that everything that happens to y happens on the outside exactly the same. On the inside, we have to take the reciprocal. Uh, and that was going to be used to transform the function. On this next one, we have multiplying by 3 fourths, which is less than 1. So that's a, actually not going to be a vertical stretch. It's actually going to be a vertical compression by a factor of 3 fourths. Then we're going to move it up 13 units. On the, the negation of the x on the inside, uh, we'll take it over the y-axis. And remember, when we go and write the mapping here, that's the, actually the only transformation that you don't have to change anything, take the reciprocal, change the sign to make it happen. And then all the outside things affect y. So let's scroll down here. Here, here we're moving a piecewise function, so what we're going to do is just take some parent points here and that define the graph, and we're going to move them as this is described. So we're moving every point right three. We're also going to reflect over the y-axis and add one. So we're just using our rule up here, and it's the same thing we did on the last page. Scrolling down to number 11, it's asking us to sketch a graph uh, where the function's negative infinity to infinity. So I know I need to use all the x values. The range is 1 to 5, so I know the graph should go no lower than 1 and no higher than 5 f of 4 should be 5, so that actually means I should have the point 4, 5 on my graph, and it's decreasing from negative 2 to 0. That means from negative 2 until 0, the y values should be decreasing, and you see they are. The trick to this question is on the ends, you have to realize that the graph has to stay constant so that it doesn't go above or below uh, 1 and 5. And we also have to go down low enough so we can have an open circle at 1, and not have it actually be part of the graph. So obviously there could be different graphs for this one. Remember the idea of a function is that every x value will only have one y value. So you can think about a train. If you and your friends are on a train, since you're all the x values, you can all get off at the same y value. But you yourself, one x, could not get off at two different train stops, so one x value cannot go to two y values. If you look at b here, first of all, this question's asking which ones are not functions. Make sure you read that. If you look at b, you have five going to three different outputs and that makes it not a function. On A, each input only goes to one output. So even though they all get off at the same train stop, they only go to one train stop. 
when you have the graph, try the vertical line test. If you can draw a line anywhere, well, that's not a vertical line. But if you can draw, that's not a vertical line either. Let me try again. Uh, there we go. That, if you can draw a vertical line that intersects more than one point, then it's not going to be a function. Looking at this function, this non-function here, actually, um, basically I would suggest you try to get y by itself. Now, if y is quadratic, that means to get y by itself, you're going to take the square root and you're going to get this plus or minus sign. That means for each x I plug in, I'm going to get two different answers, which makes it not a function. If you scroll down now, we're doing our transformations again, but this time we're transforming um, actual functions and uh, we're going to transform their parent points. So step one is to recognize what type of function it is. You can cl clearly see by the bars it's an absolute value function. Um, the negative on the outside here, we have a reflection over the x-axis. You can see it's left four, down three. Uh, so my parent points for absolute value, basically I take the absolute value of negative one to one. Here I'm going to do the opposite of the inside, so x minus 4, and then the actual of the outside, and I'm transforming these points. So I'll subtract 4 from these x's, and I'll change the signs of these y, and then subtract 3. Replot those, and then just grab your domain range off the graph. Here we have a greatest integer function. Now, you could actually graph this the way we had talked about it uh, in terms of uh, vertical stretches are spaces between the step, vertical st stretches and compressions, and the horizontal compressions and stretches are how wide the steps are and the shifting uh, up and down as well. So you can see on the outside we have a vertical stretch by 2, it's down 8. Take the reciprocal of the inside is 2, so you have a horizontal stretch by 2, and you can see the mapping over here. I want at least four steps when you graph greatest integer. For the, for the range, basically all you're doing is taking these two numbers and just saying it's jumping, and that shows uh, the gaps between that. 14 and 15, we want to figure out if these functions are even, odd, or neither algebraically. The idea of an even function is that if I plug in, let's say, a positive 2 into the function and a negative 2, that the y value is going to come out the same. The idea of an odd function is that if I plug in positive 2 and it comes out 3, then now when I plug in negative 2, it's going to come out negative 3. That's the idea of odd symmetry. So to, it's easiest to test for even symmetry first by plugging in negative x and see if it comes out the same as the original. So I've changed all the x's to negative x. Negative x to the fourth power is going to come out positive. Same with negative x to the second power. Anytime you put a negative number to an even power, it's going to come out positive. And the minus 7 won't change. Now since this is exactly the same as the original function, that makes this an even function. There's no point to check odd because it can't be odd if it's even. On number 15, again, I'm going to check for even first. Plug in negative x for all the x's. You can see this one actually changed the sign because it's to an odd power, but this one over here doesn't because it's to an even power, and since that's the not the same as the original, it's not even. So to check odd, you negate the, the output, the outside here, and I just change the sign here, and I can see that's the same as when I plugged in negative x over here, so that would make this function odd. I want to change a function that's already been tra transformed with a horizontal translation for units right. So I'll do f of x minus 4. I'll replace the x with x minus 4 and then simplify. To do a vertical compression by a half, I have to multiply the whole function by a half. So remember to put the function in parentheses to remember that it's already shifted 8 units down. So if I do a vertical compression by a half, it's going to obviously go down to negative 4. The biggest mistake people make on this problem is they forget about the negative 8. So there's a look at the practice test. Yes.